we welcome you again, all of you that are with us tonight. And those who have joined us on live stream. The fellowship of God's people is a wonderful provision. Amen. There are a lot of people in the world that are faithful brethren. They're relatively isolated and they don't have advantage of something like this. And we do remember them in that regard. This will be our 13th exposition of Jude. We're going to be in verses 17 through 19 tonight. Now you have no doubt uh, picked up on this. That Jude writes, he has an intense interest in these people. This just isn't a, a letter. That's why I prefer the word epistle to letter. I know that letters are proper word and all that, but it seems improper in Scripture because this, these are more than what people think of when they think of letters, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I like epistle because it is a more formal uh, sound to it. But he had an interest in this. He had, a, he had a burning desire to write to them about the common salvation, which is common, but hardly anybody knows anything about it is one of the great contradictions of life. Yeah. It's a common salvation and probably is the least known thing yeah. among professing Christians what salvation is. Mm. That's right. And he had an intense interest to write about it, opening up its magnitude and the many different aspects, but he couldn't do it. Mm. They weren't ready for that. As difficult as it is to say, there are some people that really aren't ready to hear a lot about the gospel. Yeah. They're really not ready yet. Some people haven't been convicted of sin enough. Amen. Other people are lukewarm and are going to backward stance. And it's got to be corrected. And that's what Jude is doing. He was, he was interested enough in these people to know what their status was. I'm speaking for myself here. I have no confidence at all in a minister that doesn't know the people he's ministering to. Yeah. Doesn't know their status. Mm -hmm. and I, don't, I won't even listen to them. I won't listen to them. Because they can't be doing the work of the Lord if you don't know who you're talking to. I, now, when you're talking to multitudes and, yeah. and a general message, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about ministering to a group of people that you're familiar with if you're serving God, you are obligated to know the status of those people. Yeah. You say, well, God will direct me in it. Well, yes, that is true, but not if you're not interested. It won't happen. Amen. This kind of awareness is exceedingly rare in our day. We're living in a time of a great falling away. And really the last thing people are interested in is the status, spiritual status of people people. It's, they, there's not a lot of people interested, even interested in that at all, whether it's people that are outside the fold that need to be in the fold, or people that say they're in the fold, but they don't act like they are. When Paul, Peter, John, and James wrote, they wrote like Jude, they knew who they were writing to. You pick up on this when you read the epistles, they knew who they were writing to. Even Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke in the book of Acts, he wrote to Theophilus, who was some kind of a governmental official, but he knew, he knew yeah. what, what Theophilus needed to hear. Mm -hmm. he, he knew his audience. Jude knows his. These are, spiritual writers were always keenly aware of their status, and if they, of the status of the people they ministered to. If they weren't, God would tell them, like the prophets, they always... They always spoke in view of the status of the people. They're aware of uh, any dangerous teachings that were extant in the group. When Jesus uh, ministered to the churches in Asia through an angel, through John, through the messengers to these churches, he told them, you got some members there that believe the bad stuff. That's what he told them. You've got some there 
that have embraced the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, and I hate that doctrine. You got some in your church. See, they knew he he pays attention. He says, now, Sardis, he says, now, you're, that's a dead church. You're dead. You have a name that you're alive. You're a big church, mega church, a lot of people. But you're dead, dead, dead. But I have some, a few, a few in your church that are really alive. <laughs> he knew the status of the, of the people. See, now, institutionalism there are certain weaknesses it genders, and one of them is a lack of interest in who's, who the people are, what they need, where they are, when they need comforted, when they need exhorted, and so forth. And this is something that uh, well before the end of the first century, a significant decline was taking place in the church. And the apostles and men like Jude, they, 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 addressed, they saw it coming, see, and it was already starting, and they saw it coming. So people want to restore the church of the first century. They got to kind of, they got to refine a little bit what they're talking about. I maintain they've done restored the church at, at Corinth and the church at Laodicea and the church at Ephesus, but God didn't want those churches restored. Yes, that's right. see? So there's a jargon, there's jargon that develops over the years about quote the first century church that doesn't they don't take this into account that things by the middle of the first century there's some major things that happened that had to be addressed you have the church of corinth if something someone was a polished speaker they didn't care what if he preached another gospel he preached another jesus he preached another spirit they just gulped it down hook line and sinker that's the kind of church they were, is what Paul told us. That's the kind of church they were. They didn't come behind in any spiritual gifts, so they, is what Paul says, so they, they, went back, they, they went backwards, see. And the church of Galatia, they, they left, they left God. They, it was a church, we're talking about a church here. Church as, Church as in Galatia. They left God. Paul said, you left him that called you into the grace of Christ. That's left him, that's God, who called you into the grace of Christ. They left him. Not much past the fifth, middle of the first century. Jewish Christians, the written book of Hebrews is written to, same thing had happened there. James, he wrote to scattered Jews, same Jewish Christians, same thing happened there. Churches like Ephesus, Pergamus, Thyatira, Sardis, Laodicea happened there. Church in Colossae, they were encountering some bad influences, people bringing philosophy and so forth to them. I know it's not pleasant to talk about these things. I understand that. And I, I don't think anyone who's of God really likes to talk, really takes like delight. If they do, that's not right either. They like to talk about this, but these things have to be addressed. Jude knew it. Yeah, yeah. Now, keep in mind that this was a public letter. Uh -huh. They didn't have these, everybody take a copy of the letter home churches. They didn't have those. He didn't say, ditto off, I write to the messenger at Corinth, now ditto this letter off and let everybody take it home. No, you sat there and you heard it read. That's right, yeah. uh -huh. Even if your name was in it. <laughs> Holy men saw his circumstances and they addressed them. Impersonal bit, things that really didn't touch them immediately, they made it their business. Yeah. Some people refuse to work at Thessalonica. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Paul said, they don't eat. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. you, that fellow didn't work, mark him, don't, uh -huh. don't have company with him. Yeah. That says button in their nose in someone else's business, someone says, but the point I'm making here is that when it comes to scriptural writers, they really didn't care whether the people particularly liked what they were saying or not. It was an urgent, whenever someone's in a backward stance, it's an urgent situation. 
You can't toy around with something like that. Some people have now. Maybe some of you have. Maybe some of you have seen some things arise in your friends or your family or whatever, and you've kind of let it go, and pretty soon, whoa, it's way completely out of hand. That's right. See? That's why we could all just do with kind of a brush-up course on, on this, that when you see something that's wrong, uh -huh. use good wisdom. Don't, don't get a hammer out and bring you a lot of damage, but deal with the situation. Don't let it slide. All right, that's what Jude is doing. We're, we're tonight in <coughs> verses uh, 17 through 19. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. <clears throat> beloved, but beloved, beloved. Now some of the other versions, which I don't like, they read, friends. Quite a number of them. NIV reads, dear friends. The New Living Translation says, My dear friends. Now, I don't care for that. There is a word, a Greek word for friends. See, and it's not this one. There is a word for friends. Philos, it's called. It means an associate or a neighbor or a close friend. That's what it means. Now, why they chose to translate this friends here, I don't know, but I don't like it. The word used here, comes from the word agapatos, which means beloved, esteemed, dear, favorite. So it's this not like just a friend. This is someone who's especially close to you. This closeness that Jude is talking about wasn't a person-to-person -person closeness. It was because you belong to Christ closeness. So he's not addressing just acquaintances. This is a hard tendency to break. Uh -huh. Just to talk with your family like it's your family, and there's nothing wrong with that, but this, there's got to be times when that isn't the way you talk. Mm -hmm. And just because they're neighbors and just because they're friends. This. But there comes a time when you say something because either they're in or they're out. Yeah. Amen. That's why you say what you That's say. Right. Either because they're in and you're seeking to comfort them and encourage them, or because they're out and you want them in. See, there's a reason when you've got to go higher up than flesh relations, and beloved does exactly that. He does not write them as a critic, but as one who prefers them, beloved, see? He's not writing them as a judge, see, but as someone he, has, he cares for, beloved. He's a member of the same family. And he says, remember, remember. Re yes. That's a, that's a very good word because this, this, just speaking like this will provoke something in those who hear it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. See, some people will say, don't forget, we're relatives, blood's thicker than water. No, it isn't. Yeah, that's right. No, it isn't. Relation to Christ is thicker than blood. That's right. In fact, Jesus said, if it isn't, you can't get in. Yes, huh? That's right. Isn't that what he said? Uh -huh. He said, if you don't hate your mother, father, brother, sister, and your own life, you can't even get in. I won't even accept you. Mm -hmm. well, I'm glad he said that because it just eliminates a lot of need for argument. Uh -huh. Remember. <laughs> Remember. I maintain that the remember factor of preaching is fading in our time. Remember, preachers and teachers are learning to accent the present. But when you say remember, you're looking at, you're looking at the past. Say the past is gone. Well, in a sense it is, but in a sense it isn't. When there's a decline, you've got to reach back to some time when there wasn't a decline and compare what's going on now with what went on then. Yeah, 
See, that's the only way you can see it right. That's the only way you can see it right. If you've got a dead church, you've got to think back when there was a living one and say, how, like, how, do, we, how do we compare here? And that's, what, that's what looking back has to do with. When present times must be compared to former times, so you can properly assess where you're at. If you're riding on the crest of a spiritual wave, you know, then you look back and remember there's been other folk that rode on the crest of a spiritual wave that were dashed on the rocks. So you can't trust in where you are. You've got to trust in who puts you where you are. Amen. Reach back into the past and recall people like Adam. There was a time when he was morally perfect. You'd never been morally perfect. So to remember them. Remember Cain. God talked to him personally. God personally talked to him. And he sinned anyway. So you go back and... I can remember. In the Christian world, this seems to be shouted out quite a bit. Remember. Yes, amen. Now, what, what are you going to remember? You don't want to be like the rich man who he didn't hear remember till he went, died and went to hell. Then the first words he heard were, the first word Abraham yeah. told him was, remember? Yeah. Boy, that wasn't pleasant, was it? No. Dude says, now I want you to remember the words that were spoken before. I mean, you really have to know the Bible. If, if you're going to be, if someone who preaches to you is going to benefit you, at some point you've got to know what the Scripture says. How else are you going to remember what he's going to tell you to remember? Some people hear a word of God. It's the first time they heard it in all their life. First time they heard it. It's been in the church when they should have been living with the knowledge of it. This is a serious situation, brethren. These brethren were backslid, but at least they knew what was in the Scripture. Mm -hmm. Remember? He doesn't admonish the people to remember a time, but to remember some words. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. He didn't say remember a sight, uh -huh. but remember some words. He exalts the ear over the eye here. Amen. Yeah. Seeing is believing. If you can see it, well, that's one of the biggest hindrances if you see it. Because yeah. if you see it, you got to know what you saw. Uh -huh. yeah. Seeing isn't believing. Believing is seeing. Amen. How often the saints are awakened by the remembrance of some word spoken in the past. Joshua, they're in the promised land. And Joshua says, Joshua 1.13, Remember the word which Moses, a servant of the Lord, commanded you. Mm -hmm. he, That's right. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can say to someone who's kind of going backwards, say, don't, remember when you made the good confession? Uh -huh. yeah. Remember when you said you believed Jesus Christ as the Son of God? Yeah. Remember when you said that? Let's be living in accordance with it. Amen. He's got to right. reach back. Remember. Remember. And Jesus said to his disciples, Remember the word I said unto you? And some people say, huh? What, what, see, what, what was that you said to us? How, like how hard is it for you to remember what Jesus has said? It, it just, it'll, you don't have to tell me. I'm not asking for an answer. But it'll tell you where you're at. Right. If you have a hard time, don't say, well, I'm so forgetful. Baloney. Mm -hmm. That's even a cheap brand of baloney. You remember to get up. You remember to eat. You remember to go to work. You, yeah. you remember a TV program. See, you, you don't have troubles. There are people who have trouble with memory, but it's not anyone here uh -huh. that I know of anyway. Remember. And there's some words that carry more weight than others by virtue of who spoke them. For example, the words of Jesus and the apostles outweigh the words of our contemporaries. See, just by virtue of who said them outweighs some of the, some of the others. Others have special significance in the, light of, in the light they shed on the present situation. Some people know more. They say more. They illuminate more. Those are words to 
Those are words to remember. For example, a psalm of praise is not appropriate for someone living in sin. That's right. <laughs> this right. isn't the kind of, God is great and God will bless you. This is the wrong word. That's right. This word won't carry our weight at all with that person. And someone who's riding on the crest of the way, walking in the spirit, you just say, you better pay attention to what you're doing now. You know, so you, it's a bit, you gotta say words are weighty depending on what, the, what kind of words they are. Amen. Jews giving some appropriate words. There's such a things as words fitly spoken. Yeah. That's what uh -huh. Solomon called them, words fitly spoken. Yeah. Some of the various virgins say that New American Standard says spoken in right circumstances. So you took the right word for the right occasion. That's what the Bible calls rightly dividing the word of truth, to giving the right word at the right time. Other virgins say at the right time or appropriately spoken or skillfully spoken. The more foundational words they have to do with foundation, foundational thinking, the broader the range of their applicability. Yeah. The higher up the words are, not, I don't mean uh, higher up, the more detailed the words are, dealing with circumstances and so forth, then, then they're restricted in their application. But when they're foundational words, like Jude's going to talk foundational stuff, it's applicable like any place. Yeah. But what are we going to remember? Words, what? The words of the apostles of our Lord Jesus. Yes, amen. Remember those words. Go. Yes. So Israel heard this same exhortation a lot from the prophets. Oh, yeah. Remember that I brought you out. Yeah. Remember yeah. I delivered yeah. you. Remember I fed you. And it, it seems like most of the time, if not all, it was those words were spoken in to, to connect their present condition yeah. with their forgetfulness. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. If, they, if they hadn't have forgot, then they, they wouldn't have drawn back and mm -hmm. they ended up in all kinds That's of judgments good. and captivities and such. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. I was also thinking about the memory. The Lord has made our memory to have the ability to connect us and join us with something yep. that is in the past. Mm -hmm. And I was considering the man that was thrown into the prophet's grave when he came into contact yeah. with Amen. his will. Yeah. <laughs> that's when he was enlivened. Yes. Amen. Our memory can serve yeah. like that. It can yeah. take us back to a place that is powerful to enliven us Amen. again. Amen. That's right. Yeah, the word of God, even though some of these words were spoken thousands of years ago, they have all the power. Yes. Sometimes they have more power than they did then. Amen, that's right. Because now we have a risen Christ yes. and the Holy Spirit and so forth in power in it. Amen. Remember the words, the apostles, words of the apostles. These are men used by God to establish the doctrine or the core teaching mm -hmm. of the church. No one else has ever established core teaching, mm -hmm. yes. foundational teaching. Whatever new thing a person has seen, it's not, if it's legitimate, mm -hmm. it's not foundational. Yeah. The foundation's already yes. been laid. That's right. mm -hmm. This is the doctrine the early church continued, and doctrine means teaching. They continued steadfastly, see that's an important word, yeah. in the apostles' doctrine. They listened to what the apostles said, because these were God, Christ's emissaries, the ones he sent out and empowered to rem he said the holy spirit will bring my words to your remembrance yes. and he'll explain my word he'll open the thing up mm -hmm. remember the words of the apostles now their words didn't obviate the words of moses and the prophets their words illuminated the words Amen. of moses and the prophets it's not the other way around moses and the prophets don't illuminate the apostles words i understand i hope everyone understands that it's their words that illuminate the, the prophets. Amen. Prophets' words aren't the enlightening words of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. They're more an explanatory and enlargement of what, what's been said. But they aren't the thing that open up yeah. the gospel. The apostles' words are the proper context for the rest of Scripture. So when you read the rest of Scripture, you've got to read it through the magnifying glass of the apostles. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Then that, then you understand if there, if it wasn't 
but for that, we sure wouldn't have just 66 books. We'd <laughs> yes. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said, this is that. That's right. Mm -hmm. And they continue to do that in their writings. That's their right. Mm -hmm. Amen. The prophets, they had more like the seed. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then the apostles, they, the seed sprouted. In fact, without the prophets, the people wouldn't have recognized the Messiah. The prophets gave enough information yes. so people would know when the real Messiah came, uh -huh. they'd be able to recognize Amen. who it was. Amen. That's, uh, and they did, those who did. This is the one. This yes. is, they knew because they knew Amen. what the prophets had said was going to come. Now notice Jude does not say, now I remember what Solomon said. Huh? He, I'm sorry, he didn't say that, nor did anybody else. That's right. Remember what Solomon said. There's nothing wrong with remembering what Solomon said. Understand, we're, but we're talking now about things that will assist build people up and assist them in making a recovery. He didn't say remember what Solomon said. He didn't say, now remember what Gamaliel said. He was remember he had a real, he had a real handle now on the law. And he didn't say that. I understand it's not that what these Ben said was wrong, said it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. For instance, no prophet ever talked about the falling away of the Gentiles. Got no word about that in the prophets. That's what Jude, that's what Jude's going to talk about. So he's going to have to tell you what the apostles said, because the prophets didn't say anything about that. They talked about the falling away of the Jews. What God was going to do about it, but he didn't say anything about, he said the Gentiles were going to come to him, but he didn't say anything about falling away. No prophet said anything about the Gentiles falling away. And that's what they had to go back to. It wasn't foretold by Moses or Samuel or any of the prophets. They didn't provide an exposition of the church or the body of Christ. Amen. They only were given limited allusions to the body of the saints. So it was very limited what they knew, but they... They, they introduced enough that we get an idea of what it should be, but then the apostles expound, expounded and enlarged it. Amen. The situation had risen could not adequately be addressed by the message of the prophets. That's right. Once you knew it, you could go back to the prophets and you could, you could kind of pick up on some things, right. but you had to hear what the apostles said about it. The apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ Apostle means one sent out. These are the apostles. These there were apostles sent out. Well, the Holy Spirit sent out two two of men, mm -hmm. Barnabas and Saul. They were called apostles. Both of them were called apostles, uh -huh. while Saul was not Paul, but Saul. Uh -huh. yeah, but they were apostles sent out by the Holy Spirit. The work wherein to I uh -huh. sent them, the Holy Spirit said. Then there were apostles of the church. The part of the church sent them out. But yeah. these are the apostles Jesus sent out empowered and sent out apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ none of their teaching was just for a particular time now, a person has to know this that the apostles in their preaching and teaching did not deal with regional Amen. Yeah. provincial situations they dealt with foundational matters yes. That our generation has has rejected the teachings for the most part of Paul. Well, yes, because it is. this is this is I don't know. It, well, it's 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 it, it, it can't unless they receive his words, they are not going to be able to prosper you know, in the kingdom. This is this is what God has had to say to yes. the church. Amen. Remember the words of the apostles now, how they told you. Now this is long before it was going to happen. They. Yeah, they prophesied, in other words. They told you there should be mockers in the last time. Uh -huh. That's right. Now, it's my persuasion that the apostles proclaimed every essential doctrine. It was in complete harmony with the rest of what God had said. But it was the most thorough and shed light on everything everything else but the apostles didn't deal with in their teaching or their doctrine right? 
like exhortation, correction, rebuke, that's not doctrine. You understand that? Doctrine is what you rebuke and correct people so they can get back so they can, they can hear the doctrine or the teaching. Now, you remember how the apostles told you, they, now I like that word, told you. The New American Standard says they were saying, they're too weak. NIV says, remember how they said, that's too weak. As you hear the word translated told, there's a word translated told, and it's not saying. It means equivalent, it's equivalent to asseverate, that's assert, affirm. Aver or swear or maintain. It's a it's a more of a dogmatic. Yeah. Now the world frowns on dogmatism. They don't like yeah. dogmatism. Mm -hmm. This is the way it is. But see, this is how the apostles preach. This yeah. is the way it is. Yeah. Amen. And yeah. the only time we can say this is the way it is is when we're dealing with the pure word of God. We uh -huh. we can't say that of our views or our personal opinion. Uh -huh. But the apostles they didn't preach their opinion. They, they told they told you this. Uh -huh. This was a this was a prophecy, a prophecy. Men in using words, see when they use words of lesser weight, like friends, they were saying, and you use words of lesser weight, eventually the people begin to fall down into mediocrity. Yeah. This is not, this is what's gonna happen. Uh -huh. They'll fall down into mediocrity. Sometimes it takes a while for this to actually develop, but unless you use words of strength that the Holy Spirit teaches, Amen. not that man's wisdom uh -huh. teaches, your doctrine is kind of weak. Mm -hmm. Even though technically you might, it might be true technically, but you're using weak words. You're using words uh -huh. that don't have power in them. Moses brought down ten suggestions. Ten yeah. suggestions. Yeah. That's right. Uh -huh. That's exactly right. Yeah. In fact, that, that's actually how men treat those that's right. today, isn't that's it? That's right. This is what we should try. Mm -hmm. This is we. Nobody can do it, but this is what you. Uh -huh. So that's exactly what they're what they're concluding. There should be. Now this wasn't. Uh, he didn't say now. If things continue the way they are, this is apt to happen. He said they should. This is, this is going to happen. Amen. See, this was a prophecy. This wasn't a diagnosis. Uh -huh. This was a prophecy. This is what's going to happen. This exposes the fallaciousness or invalidity of modern views of contemporary relevance. Now, here's something that's relevant that was said way back there. Okay? This contradicts us. What does that have to do with us today? Tell us something about today. In the time we're living, said, so, no, I've got to tell you something about yes, amen. in the past there. Uh -huh. They told you. They had to think of something that was said in the past to assist them in the present. Mm -hmm. Well, they told you there was going to be mockers, mm -hmm. yeah. scoffers. Basic Bible English says people that make sport or ridicule, beguilers, make fun of you, make fun of you, make fun of God, laugh at God. And the Message Bible says who don't take things seriously anymore, they treat them like a joke. Well, that, that's a very rough, but it's, that's true, that's, that's a, good, a good saying. They'll treat it with contempt or ridicule, yes. Off time by uh, introducing the words of these um, various, uh, some of them are, are versions, some of them are paraphrases, some of them are kind of a commentary, and how that the, uh, and you draw attention to the language. Mm -hmm. Now there's, if a person has another word that means the exact same thing, then we don't have any contention with that. But the way you change the message is to change the words That's of right. the message. That's right. Exactly. So even even on some of these, whenever that one that you that you uh, just cited there, make fun of you, make fun of God, laugh at God, 
Now, all, if all you have is one of these, yeah. does that carry the no. full weight of the word scoffer? No. They may be included in what That's scoffing right. is, That's but, right. but they're not complete enough. That's right. So That's there's exactly the right. weakness of it. It isn't a full communication of what Jude was saying. And so uh, sometimes, the, you know, the ones that you, that you cite, they, they do a pretty good job of finding an exact word. But you've got to be serious about Amen. what God has said. Serious mm -hmm. enough to say, we're not going to just talk the way we feel comfortable talking. Yeah. We're interested in whether the words really carry the full weight of the communication. Amen. And, and so uh, you, you're not being like re legalistic, like, no, you've got to say this, this, and this. No. But if it's that message, you've got to say what yeah, that message exactly. said or you're departing from it. Mm -hmm. This is what I meant when I said to you, when the language is what I call dumbed down, the people tend to mediocrity. Now you think of it this way, every word has, is, has, is like a weight, certain, major, a certain weight. Now you got this bucket, you're, and let's say that it's a liquid weight, and so God uses one gallon words, see? And so you got this girl, but, but, but to convey these one gallon words, you used uh, quarter cup words. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And so now you deliver this bucket, supposed to, be, supposed to have a message in it. Mm -hmm. But you use quarter cup words yeah. uh -huh. instead of gallon words. Mm -hmm. So the fellow's not going to get the message. That's right. Instead of saying no, saying maybe. That's it. That's uh -huh. it. That's yes. it. Uh -huh. so or might changed, be. Yeah, that's you right. have changed the message yeah, for right. doing it. Mm -hmm. Now this is Satan. See, this is what Satan does. Uh -huh. This is what he did in the garden. Yes. He changed the message. That's right. He just added one word. That's right. Not. Ye shall surely die. Ye shall surely die. Four words. Ye shall not surely die. Yeah. Five words, but hey. It yeah. Huh? It changed the message. Amen. It's completely erroneous message, even though that would have just one, that probably would have still been a passing grade yeah. in the world. Paraphrase them. Like a person, just somebody oh, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. you, they can say something, uh -huh. and then somebody else can tell you what they said. And if they hear it, they go, no, that's not what I said at all. Yeah. They know the difference because yes. what, what was intended in the communication and what is Amen. it. Amen. God's going to tell some people, that's not what I said. Yeah. Now, a mocker, uh -huh. someone who ridicules, holds up with contempt and ridicule, They'll, they'll say something, they attribute it to God that's mocking God. Like you, that's be honest about this. You can't do anything that's going to affect what God thinks about you. That is mockery. That's right. Amen. See, God has spoken on this subject. Yes. Whatever subject God has spoken on, he says, if you, if you don't seek me, I won't hear you. If you don't listen to my son, I won't receive you. Yeah. See, he's spoken clearly on these matters, but mockery, now this is religious mockery. Though they'll speak in a jesting manner, and there's, there's an awful lot of jesting that goes on in the name of the Lord. Awful lot. So There'll be mockers in the last time. Other versions read the last times, the last days, the end time, final point of time. Last days, last time. Mm -hmm. Those words. In all the old covenant writings, they're mentioned three times. Mm -hmm. Last, last days, last times, three times. Mm -hmm. That's all they're mentioned. Isaiah 2, 2. Hosea 3, 5, and Micah 4, 1. And all of them have to do with the last days of Israel's prominence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the last days of the applicability of the old covenant. That's what they were talking about. They weren't talking about end of time last days. Uh -huh. They weren't talking about that, see. If you want to know about the end of time, you got to listen to the apostles Amen. That's right. to pick up on that. That's right. The induction, and Joel used the word afterward, and then Peter interpret it meant last days in the last days it wasn't the last days of the world it was the last days of the old covenant that he was talking about come to pass in the last days see when you're when the old covenant is obviated then and only then will I pour out my spirit upon that's what he was talking about and he was going to do it before the great and terrible day of the Lord that's how, that's how Joel talked about the end of time, the great and terrible day of the Lord. <laughs> he's going to do this before the world ends. He's going he's gonna to do this at the time of the end of the Old Covenant age. That's how they, they spoke about the last yeah. days. But as Jude uses the term, huh. last days, he's telling his readers that there's, there are men among them who had the kind of damning influence that would surface at the end of time. Uh -huh. That's the kind of men you've been listening to. They have hmm. the kind of heresies and the kind of damning influence that will happen at the last, yeah. that last days mm -hmm. when Satan's going to gather against the church. Yeah. That uh -huh. Those kind of men are yeah. in your assembly. Yeah. That's what he was saying. Already it begun in the days of the... Apostles are already beginning. We already started. It first started with Judas. There's your first example. Someone on the inside defected. So there it started with him. Next time in service in Acts 5 is two people. Ananias and Sapphira. Then the Judaizers in Acts 15. There was a cluster of Judaizers that went out with another message. See? Be another message. And then those who left the apostles, Peter spoke to, left the company of the apostles and the elders. They were with us, but they were not of us. They went out from us. See, so, yeah. so it started happening in the first century. Huh. And so Jude says, I remember. What I'm telling you shouldn't surprise you because the apostles said there were going to be mockers in the last days. Mm -hmm. And you've got that kind of people right there, who will walk after their own ungodly lusts, yes. ungodly desires. Now they, they want something God doesn't want. Yeah. Amen. They're saying something God doesn't say. Uh -huh. They're doing things God doesn't do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? Peter uses this I've been speaking from this text yeah. for the last three days at work. There were false prophets also among yeah. the people. Yeah. Even as there shall be false yeah. teachers yeah. among uh -huh. you. Yes. The privilege shall bring in damnable heresies. heresies. That's privilege. Right. Yeah. Quietly. Just like, just like. Yes. Surreptitiously. That's right. Subtly. They'll That's bring right. these things in. That's right. Amen. And it's, see, John, John said, you have heard that Antichrist will come. Uh -huh. He didn't say, but that's not true. He's not going to come. He's going to come. Yes. But there's many Antichrists uh -huh. that come in before. Or what Judas says is, there's this, they told you about these last days, but there's some other ones that are preceding it, like Peter said, even uh -huh. now. See, there That's are right. some that precede that are the same uh -huh. mindset as That's these right. heretics that's going to surface, that's going to be destroyed by the breath of Christ coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> Walking their own ungodly lusts. Their desires and ambitions don't have the divine nature. They're not motivated by the divine nature. You say, how are we going to know? You're going to know these people by their fruit. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people quote this all the time, but they don't use it. They quote it, but they don't use it. Yeah. They got these bad religious circumstances on their hands. They got these hypocritical religious people they face, but they are, fr they are fruit. Yeah, that's right. Some kind of teaching produce these kind of people. Amen. If you see holy people, godly people, people you love to be around, some kind of teaching produced those kind of people. Amen. They were produced by a powerful gospel. That's uh, what they were, they were produced yes. by that. So you know them by their fruit. Yeah. 
That's how Jude knew these people, by their fruit. If you were to combine all the wealth of the world and all the health of the world and all the dreams of the world fulfilled and answering all the problems of the world happened, if you added it all up, it'd be own lusts. Hmm? It all add up to that. So people that talk about uh, yeah, health and wealth uh -huh. and your dreams answered and God wants you to be, they're talking about their own lusts. Yes, That's what they're talking about. That's what he said, they'll walk, they'll walk after their own ungodly uh -huh. lusts. God really wants you uh -huh. to have a lot. You're the head not the tail. You're going to lend, not borrow. Well, God didn't even tell Israel that was going to happen. He said, if you obey me, that will happen. Right? <laughs> that promise was, was a, had a contingent on it. There's being priests today, their own, their own lusts. See, the self, self life is the contemporary summation of ungodly lusts. Right? When you're the center of things, that's ungodly lust. Because in God's economy, Jesus is the center that's of right. things. And he's supposed to be the center of our lives. That's right. So if he isn't, that's right. ungodly lust is the only other Amen. category of desires. Yes. Now these, these that have their ungodly lusts, these are... Are they who separate, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. Now, remember, Jews being moved along by the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. Holy men of God spake as they are moved. He's already been talking about the character of these people crept in unawares. Now, let me, rem let me remind you, remember the words of Jude, what he's already said about these men. They were of old ordained to condemnation. They're ungodly. They turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. They denied the only true God and the Lord Jesus Christ. They're filthy dreamers, defiling the flesh, and they despise of dominion. They speak evil of things they do not know. They corrupt themselves in the things they know naturally. They speak evil of dignities. They spoke evil of things they didn't understand. They've gone in the way of Cain. They ran greedily after, greedily after the heir of Balaam. They perished in the gain saying of Korah. There are spots in your feast. They're feeding themselves without fear. There are clouds without water and trees without fruit. That withereth. They're without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, roaming, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, murmurers, complainers, walking in their own lust, speak great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration. <laughs> There's 27 traits. Yeah. I think a man probably ridden out on a rail yeah. that said that about somebody in that was in an existing church. Yeah, that's right. But these men were in, they were among these people. Mm -hmm. this, this was his assessment. It was a revealed assessment. These are they. Can, can you spot these people right away? Only, only if you're walking in the Spirit and living by faith. That's the only way. That's right. Otherwise, you can't detect them just like these men. These people didn't detect these men. You say, how could you overlook somebody like that? Very simply, live in the flesh. Yeah, that's right. That's how. And when you've got people preaching things that move people to live in the flesh, you, you, you put them at the greatest possible handicap. Amen. Amen. What do you say, Jude? About them? They separate. They separate themselves. These are going to add these. They're going to add to these uh -huh. lists. They yeah. separate themselves or cause divisions or divide you. Separate themselves. They isolate themselves, and then heap men under themselves after their own lusts. See? Yeah. This is the same problem that rose in Corinth. Divisions. See, rose. Somebody came in with a different teaching. Then they gathered a little group of people around them that embraced that little bit of malarkey. Yeah. See, that was a division. And then Paul abraded the Corinthians for having that division. Yeah. 
having that division, he told them, this void, you're still eating the Lord's table. Yeah. Amen. You're not eating the Lord's yeah. supper. Uh -huh. yeah. That's what he told them. Yeah. You're, not eat, you're not even eating. They were, they were physically, they were at uh -huh. the table, but you, you weren't even eating that. Mm. See, because division's from the devil's table. Amen. That's, right. That's not from God's table. Uh -huh. That's the devil's table. That's how serious division is. But you'll be hard pressed to find people today who think division is really that serious. But it is serious. In fact, uh, Paul told those in Rome to mark them that cause division. That's what they were doing. That cause division and avoid them. Well, these people Jude writing to, they couldn't detect them, so Jude's marking them. That's right. Amen. <laughs> amen. Well, this is, this is, all, this is common in, in, in the assemblies today. They, they'll even teach you that, well, it's, a, it's, it's your right to have an opinion. Yeah. You can have your own opinion. Yeah. And when it comes to all kinds of things, like the, the coming of the Lord, well, you can have your own private opinion yeah. about that. And it's okay. We should respect it, actually. Yeah. yeah. Divisions. Yes. The Jews here separate themselves. I get the picture that that means that as they're living after their own ungodly lusts, that they have to separate themselves from where true fellowship is happening That's today. Right. Because you can't live for yourself in an environment where you give yourself wholly to Christ at That's the same right. time. That's right. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. And the difference is they did it, they did this in the assembly. Yes. Separations happened in the, in the assembly because of these men. I've, now I've experienced this separation among a group of believers. I've, I've experienced this. So I don't know what he's talking about here. This is what, this is what the Jews intimidated Peter into doing. Remember when yeah. he was sitting with the Gentiles? In come the makers of division. I'm sure Peter, it wasn't because he doubted the, he was, he was trying to avoid any kind of controversy, I gather, but he got up and he, when these men come up, there was a division. Maybe that's why people that, a lot of churches I preached at, there were people, some people sat in the back. Maybe that's what they were doing, making divisions. <laughs> Go ahead. These are men that are walking after their own lust. Amen. They're introducing, uh, in order for there to be a division, someone's got to be wrong. So they're introducing error into the doctrine somehow. And they're causing for the very brethren to separate over this. But see, we're not talking about people who don't have a complete understanding. And they're, they're actually working together to find out what the truth is. We're talking about people who start off being having having sensual earthy lusts mm -hmm. that are drawing people apart and creating the division yes. for that Amen. purpose. Amen. Yeah. And he said they're they're sensual. Sensual is the antithesis or the opposite of spiritual. Yeah, amen. Yeah. It's living after the flesh yeah. without any recourse to the things of the spirit. In other words, their sole living, their sole reason for living was what can be experienced in this present evil world, which is through the senses, sensual. Yeah. Some people might think of sensual as only having sexual connotations, but no, that's that's just one of the chief yeah, right. sins. But sensual has to do with the senses. Mm -hmm. they're, they're governed, their whole life is governed by their physical senses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instead of by their by a spiritual walking yeah. in the spirit. Yeah. Some versions read worldly minded, mm -hmm. follow natural instincts. They're worldly people, natural men, controlled by their impulses, yeah. unbelievers. They live on a natural plane. They're fleshly. They're mere animals. What's how animals animals live by the senses, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> so Williams translated said they're mere just animals. Jude said they were like brute beasts. See, 
Merely sensual creatures, carnally minded people, the way Amplified says. All of their desires have to do with things and experiences pertaining to the body. So rather than keeping under their body uh -huh. Uh -huh. and managing their body, uh -huh. their body manages them. That's right. Really given, a lot of people do this and it's, it's very subtle. They'll, they'll, uh, but they, even when they minister, they'll, they try to appeal to yeah. your emotions yeah. or, or some kind of sensual response. Yeah. That, and then they call that spiritual. But see, that's not spiritual. That's spiritual. You see what you there are, see there are there's certain immoral deeds that are sensual. Take for instance an, an adulterer. He has a sensual appetite. This way he lives for. Take a drunkard. Someone who takes drugs. These are these are just these are kind of the bottom of the bottom of the pit type things, but. This is what they're doing. Yes. They're living by their senses. Right. Mm -hmm. I think of, of lovers of pleasures yes. mm -hmm. more than lovers of God. Yes. Yes. It doesn't make any difference what you're taking pleasure in. Uh -huh. It could be a forest full of birds and butterflies, you know, something that That's right. doesn't even look like sin. Uh -huh. yes. but if it takes your affection and your attention away from God, mm -hmm. robs God of what belongs to Him, yep. and to please yourself in Amen. any way. Then, then this is wrong. Yeah. Amen. Whose God is their belly? Mm -hmm. Whose God is their belly? Yes. That's right. See, so these these men that were among them, they were promoting. They were they themselves were sensual, but see, they were these weren't like visitors, mm -hmm. neighbors. Mm -hmm. These were teachers. Yeah. yeah. They came right. in unaware. So these men were promoting that kind of religion. Yeah. Well, he elaborates on it. They don't have the Spirit. Yeah. Having not the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Having not the Spirit. Other versions read, devoid of the Spirit. Do not have the Spirit. They're controlled by impulses because they don't have the Spirit. They do not possess the Spirit. They do not have God's Spirit in them. Okay. Now, let's be clear about it. These teachers were not without the Spirit because they were sensual. They were sensual yeah. because they are without the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. See, so when you find someone that's living in the dregs of sin, don't say, you better watch out, this will separate you from God. They've already been separated, that's why they're living that way. Yeah. 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 This, is, this is a revolutionary, this is revolutionary when you see this. Well, that's what Paul says there in Romans 1. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's the mark. That's the mark. Mm -hmm. That's right. It is revolutionary because there's a mm -hmm. there's an approach to being a Christian today that leaves people thinking that you really can't be separated at all. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. That's right. See, once you're in, you just the spirit just stays with you. Yes, he just lives in another room. That's all. But no, it says it says that these men they were, they didn't have yeah. they didn't have the spirit. Someone would be afraid to make a statement like that. But if you see someone walking contrary to the Spirit, it's not because they have the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's because they don't have the Spirit. Yeah, exactly. See, that's a little bold statement to make that. Whoa, whoa. Uh -huh. Not sure they can say something like that. <laughs> well, and the other alternative is that you, you, the Holy Spirit resides where He's not wanted and where He's quenched, and that now you have a hard time establishing that. That's right. I'll buy the fact that person may fall into stumble into sin once or so forth and then the Holy Spirit can quicken them back but you but when this is the way you live yeah. it's a, that's another matter it's another matter see those who promote that sort of thing that's what Satan's promoting and they're his ministers Amen. and as Peter as Corinthians first second Corinthians 11 15 says his ministers transform themselves yes. uh -huh. into the ministers of the Lord see Amen. Even into apostles. And it doesn't mean they don't have any kind of spirit. They have the spirit of the world. In That's them. right. Now it is a, it's imperative that churches be, have a zero tolerance for the kind of persons Jews described. Amen. Now this person, I'm not going to name this person, but this is related to somebody I know. 
But this person stole the wives of four men. He was a preacher. He was a preacher. And apparently it had, quote, this problem for many years. But the churches still wanted him because he was such a good Bible teacher. This is an actual case. I can't cautiously be. <laughs> I apologize that the person whose son it is hears this, but I, I, I'll keep from him who it really is. <laughs> but you see, they didn't see this that Jude was talking yeah. about. They didn't see this. You say, well, why do you, why do you have why can't you tolerate? Because there'll be more and more more adulterers. Yes, amen. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. The the problem is other people will become this way. Yes, brother Jason. Just to make this uh, this principle real, there was a a news article today online that a church in Kentucky hired a preacher who was a registered sex offender. The man raped a 14-year-old boy in the church twice and is now up on charges. Mm. Mm. And they said they hired the man because the Bible teaches us to forgive. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. Simple. Mm -hmm. Simplicity. That's right. Yes. See the danger of that? Well, of course we see the danger of that doctrine. Uh -huh. The Lord doesn't tell you to forgive anybody who hasn't repented. Yeah. Amen. He does tell you to be ready to forgive, yeah. like, he, like he is. Yeah. You, it's impossible to forgive someone if they don't repent. Amen. Amen. Not even God forgives somebody right. who doesn't repent. And you're no, you surely can't outdo God, can you? No. So if he repents, Jesus said, if he repents, first rebuke him. If he repents, then forgive him. In the meantime, and you're not standing back there with a grudge. Uh -huh. You're standing back there ready. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready. When, yeah. when the, the case of Brazil itself, I'm ready to forgive because yeah. I was forgiven. But, yeah, yeah that's a tra tragic. It is absolutely wrong to give preference or freedom to anyone who poses a threat yes. to someone else. Oh, yeah. yes. And you see in that case... Uh -huh. While they were posing to to have a forgiving spirit, mm -hmm. they were making others who were vulnerable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they were putting them in a dangerous yeah, position. That's right. They'll be charged with this. Amen. They were giving preference to the wrong. Yeah. Person. Amen. Oh, well, see, there's a there's a teaching that produced that attitude. That's right. Amen. You won't get you won't you won't come to that conclusion by from the scripture of the apostles' doctrine. You'll come to the conclusion that sin is serious, and whoever's in it better get out of it. Yes, amen. We now know that the Roman Church has been doing this at least for decades. That's right. Uh -huh. Possibly for centuries. They're yes. yes. covering people like this. Yes. They've been uh, not, yeah. not, not standing up mm -hmm. to them, not dealing with them in the right way, and shuffling them off someplace, and actually putting them in places where they had access to other children, oh, yes. and other people. Mm -hmm. and they we know this now. They haven't, didn't even apologize for it till recently. Yeah, that's right. Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. they, uh, this, yeah, the, the, the man I was referring to was the pastor of the church. Uh -huh. yeah, we, he was <laughs> not a man in the congregation. And, and Jude is talking here about that's, people that's in right. leadership that's positions. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's totally right. So, uh -huh. yeah, there, there, are, there are things that disqualify a man from leadership I believe permanently. Mm -hmm. yes. I do too. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Doesn't mean they can't be. If they're repentant, they can't be. That's right. In the fellowship, but you're not going to lead. Uh huh. Yeah. Above reproach. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Is there something about um, re repentance? You know, when a person repents and they're 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 genuinely in their heart, they're repenting to you for something they've done to you. Yeah. That will provoke your forgiveness. I mean, if you have a heart to forgive to begin with. But I mean, there, there's not. You, this is not something you theorize about. Uh, like, am I can I am I ready to forgive and all this? Yeah. That's all psychological. But yeah. if you if if this person from their heart for, uh, repents to you, that will provoke. Uh, I'm convinced of that. That when you come to the Lord and you have a good heart and you repent, 
He will forgive you. You oh, yes. you can come with him with words, and you can you you he, he, he'll you do said, it. Bring with you words. That's, That's right. Amen. Bring with you words. Yeah. Well, I I would like pra I would like practice this right now. Yes. <laughs> Before the services, Brother Jason was it was sharing how a, this lady had called him. Uh -huh. She'd called here. I've been a little bit provoked. And I made some statements that now, see, I repent of I made them. I shouldn't have made them at all. They weren't der exactly derogatory, but I'm just sorry I made them. Mm -hmm. So I repent of doing that because I know that uh, I expressed my concern that a lot of people like that come around. Mm -hmm. And I still am concerned about that, but I certainly have to think of a different way to say <laughs> a different way to say it. But that's what... These these teachers here, they didn't do this apparently. We have yeah, they, uh, maybe some of them were stirred up by what Jude wrote, but there's no no, no record of it. Yeah. And Paul did the same thing. So he he named some people. Uh -huh. He he just named them. He'd tell Timothy, "Who watch out for this guy here?" Uh -huh. Amen. Because all God's people aren't mature. Mm -hmm. See, that's right. And if you if you if you bring something into the assembly that will lead a babe. Well, Jesus already told you, better have a millstone hung around your neck and cast in the depth of the sea. Say, God would never do that. Well, that's, that was the king said that. Amen. So, and, and these kind of people do exploit the weak. Uh -huh. yes. these, are the, right. these are the people they go after. Uh -huh. See? Amen. Yeah. Well, that's Brother Jude. His, uh, yes, yeah, Sister Ada. That phrase, sensual, not having the spirit, oh, yeah. uh, it's like two different sources of breath or life. The, the, there's the soulish breath that is yeah. the pure yeah. appetite and yeah. passion yeah. of uh, like a brute, you know, kind yes. of image comes to mind. Rather than being led by the spirit, or that is the nature of Christ, Amen. which puts these other desires and appetites appetize in subjection not governed by those things and and then the spirit of Christ then see gives those new appetites Amen. and affections which are of the Lord so which life are we governed by yeah, that's is, right that's right yeah I'm as a young man I worked with with drunks now they call them addicted to drink now, but drunks, just old-fashioned, staggering drunks. It was a very, very, very difficult, because I never met one that said, he, that admitted he was a drunk. But it, it, dealing with those kind of people took something from me. I finally realized what was happening, but it, it either made you, like, angry all the time. It's hard. When you're dealing with someone who's not, it was on this living for the flesh. You got to have your armor on. You had to be dead serious. And then there's times when you've got to excuse yourself or tell a fellow to leave, one or the other. It's as dangerous as corruption is dangerous wherever it's found. All it can be all it can be is just adding one word to what God said. And Adam and Eve can tell you why. We accepted it. That yeah. was a new ver that was a new version uh -huh. of God's word. That's right. Yeah, you've got that you've got that extreme where you, it's a it's a, it's really evident. I mean, you can tell just by looking that this guy's got problems. But then you got this other extreme, like my son Andrew. You know, he's too smart. He thinks he's so smart. <laughs> he's got everything figured out, and 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 but he, he's he's so dangerous. To himself, oh, yeah. because he can be instructed by by some of the wisest of men, and yet he'll just disregard it yeah. and go on his way, thinking that he's got it all figured out. And yet he's he's is at the he's like hanging over hell on a thread. I know it. And he just but see that you got these kinds of people that that and I've met a ton of them out there in the workplace. You know they're they're super smart people they're in their intellect. But because of that, they just can't seem to believe yeah. what Jesus said. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Amen. All, this, this is all the more reason why the church 
people of God have to be holy. Amen. That at least neutralizes the effect of these kind of people. If people are walking in the spirit, they're like they're they're, they're sharp. Their awareness is sharpened up. Be that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. And, yeah. and then this stuff is offensive to yeah. you. And it, but if you're weak, Recognize that's right. If you're weak, he was. The rest of us have to consider the weak and watch for them. Amen. Uh -huh. Yes, brother. It's amazing to me that Jude had to tell these people because they were these men were unaware. And so they had been undetected. You, you think that, I mean, in the natural realm, you'd think that a person who was described in such a way would just be obvious. Obviously dangerous, obviously predatory, that they just stick out of society in, in general. But they were unaware. Yeah. It, it, it didn't, it just didn't appear. Yeah. They didn't appear to be who they really were. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this is exactly the kind of people that Jesus uh, said were, at, were wolves, were garbed in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. See, if you, uh, if you dumb down the assembly so that it's, it's not apparent to anyone that comes in, they can't conclude you're, that you're God serving the Lord, yeah. you've placed everybody there is in danger. Yeah. Because it, it'll welcome these yes. kind of people. Yeah. Why the focus on the Word of God is imperative. I'm, I'm reminded that that the foolishness of God is greater yes. than the wisdom of yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, we, we talk about these so-called super smart people. Uh -huh. Frankly, very few of them really oh. impress me. Uh -huh. they, somebody. Yeah tells me how smart they are, tell them they got to tell me it doesn't count. Yeah. But they, um, they, the, the point is, mm -hmm. is if you yourself are, are really loving the Lord yes. and that you are serious about the righteousness and the holiness of God and the, and the uh, absolute truth of His Word, that there's going to come a rub between what they say or what they are and what you know to be true. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. And it'll protect you. Even, yeah. even if you aren't one of the, quote, super smart people, you'll be wise in mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah. Amen. Well, let's all pledge ourselves, brethren, to do our part in maintaining an environment that repels yeah, that's right. ungodly and uh, draws amen. godly. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this epistle of Jude and how it alerts us to the potency of iniquity and the duty that all of us have to shun things that are contaminating by nature and people that are contaminating by nature. Grant us grace not to overestimate our strength, not to be merely condemning, but to be uh, ready to deliver a word that's in due season, whether it's a word of salvation or a word of rebuke. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.